All right. So now if we look at the um, the difference between designing for screen versus designing for print or for paper. So if you think about the iPhone 4, it now has a screen resolution of 300 pixels per inch. But this is quite a lot larger than the standard 72 pixels per inch that most web design monitors are set for. But it's substantially smaller than a typical prepress or print job intended for paper output, which would be 2500 pixels per inch. So we can see straight away that uh, the resolution quality for screen-based work is a lot smaller than for paper. The human eye can perceive much more detail on, on paper. So uh, when, we, when we're talking about screen resolution, we have to consider the difference between vector and bitmap graphics. And Illustrator is primarily a vector-based drawing program. Um, which means that it works with digitally enhanced graphics. And the benefit of this is that you zoom in really close, then the quality of the image doesn't degrade at all in comparison to a bitmap or a raster graphic, where if you zoom in, you will automatically see pixelation and jagged edges. The reason this works in Illustrator, uh, for, the display for screen is that it uses something called anti-aliasing. So when you zoom in really close, it creates um, sort of smooth edges around the pixels to make it appear smooth to, to our eyes. Okay, so if we have a look at the preferences menu over here and go into the general settings, and we can see that there's an option there, anti-aliasing for vector. If we, this only actually affects the screen display because vector graphics will print out at a, a, a very smooth um, scale no matter whether you increase the size or reduce the size but if we untick this box uh, and zoom in quite close to our image we can see that we we are now able to see the jagged edges and pixelation around the graphic but this as I said is only for screen display uh, if we tick the box again, anti-aliasing for vector, it'll give us that nice smooth look again. Uh, web browsers such as Chrome or uh, Internet Explorer or Firefox apply anti-aliasing at 72 pixels per inch by default. Um, and as we've already said earlier, certain devices work with a pixel resolution much higher than this, like the iPhone 4, 300 pixels per inch. but we're working within the web environment and browsers are still doing that at 72 pixels per inch. And Illustrator and the Adobe products, Photoshop and so on, if you go to save for web, they always export graphics at 72 pixels per inch intended for browser display. So if we just have a quick look, save for web, and we can see that the resolution is 72 pixels per inch. If we go to the view menu, um, and choose pixel preview we uh, pixelation the right side of the frame takes up more pixels in that case so anti-aliasing helps to prevent jagged edges but if it's overused it can cause blurriness so it's important to, to try to strike a balance between the two and what happens is if we look at this example that I have open here we can get blurry edges on straight lines if we're using anti-aliasing and that's something that we don't want because straight lines should be perfectly smooth um, it's only the curved pixels that we really require anti-aliasing on so if we select the path uh, in Illustrator the reason why certain straight lines get anti-aliasing is because there's no way to fill in half a pixel if you're working at 72 ppi. So, paths sometimes fall in between the pixels and what happens is that Illustrator creates uh, an extra blur around the edge of that line or path. So, there's a beautiful feature built into the latest version of Illustrator which is called Align to Pixel Grid and this means that any graphics you create will automatically align themselves to the pixel grid um, which removes the possibility of this 
unwanted blurriness on straight lines. So if we go to the uh, transform panel under the window menu, this is a, a panel we'll be using quite a lot, and choose select paths, uh, select the paths that we want to um, align, and then tick the align to pixel grid box there in the transform panel. And you'll see that automatically those lines are aligned to the pixel grid and we lose that blurry edge. If we go to the flyout menu of the transform panel, there's also an option there to align new objects to the pixel grid. So when we create new graphics, they will automatically align themselves. And finally, if we open up a new document and choose the web profile from the drop down menu and then go to the advanced section at the bottom of the window, there's a tick box there as well, align new objects to pixel grid. If we make sure that that's ticked, then every time we open a new graphic in a new document, it will align and we don't have to worry about that anymore. And finally, uh, it's possible to do this with symbols as well. So if you create a new symbol from the symbols panel, again, there's an option there to align to pixel grid from the flyout menu. and Every, every symbol will automatically align itself to the grid. Very important for web design work because we need to know uh, right down to the pixel where our graphics are being positioned on the screen. So, on to color management. And what we can see here is that in Illustrator, um, in terms of color that you're using in your graphics, sometimes if you're using graphics from different sources, what we see in Illustrator may not be representative of what will be seen by the user on their computers or devices. And the reason for this is that many different programs use different color profiles and um, they may not be set up for a final web-based screen res uh, display. Um, most web graphics are RGB, um, but in reality we should be using the profile sRGB for web design. So uh, if we go to the Save for Web um, dialog box and click on the flyout menu on the top right corner, we can see that Illustrator automatically converts our RGB graphics to sRGB whenever we export for web, and Photoshop does the same. So we need to set Illustrator's view to sRGB so that what we see in Illustrator when we're actually working on our documents is the same as what it's going to look like when we output it for web. So if we go to the color settings menu under preferences and we can see that the general purpose settings that Illustrator is set to by default already does convert things sRGB. But if you just look down a little bit uh, under color management policies we can see that it is preserving embedded profiles. Now this is a problem because if we, for example, import a photograph from Photoshop into Illustrator, then that photograph might be using a different color profile than we're using in Illustrator. And what happens there is that Illustrator is going to preserve that color profile and ultimately what we see in Illustrator is not going to be the same as what it's going to be output as for web. So if we choose um, North America Web Internet from the settings drop down menu at the top. Uh, we can see that the preserve embedded profiles has been changed to convert to working space, which means that automatically the colors will change to what we will end up seeing on the web. We can uncheck the profile mismatches uh, boxes because we know that we want these settings so if there is a profile in this match it's intended and finally we should always export things from Photoshop as sRGB so that there won't be any color shifts when we finally look at the output in a browser